All right, let's talk about this 49ers offense that continues to look like pretty well. Uh, I mean, they're doing things well. I mean, it, it might not be like the best offense in the league, but it's pretty good. And one of the more difficult offenses to stop. It's a very complete offense and kind of reminds you of the team that went to the Super Bowl just two years ago. I mean, it feels like forever ago. It was literally, you know, the most recent team to go to the Super Bowl was Tampa Bay. Before that, it's San Francisco. So they're not that far removed. And I mean, Garoppolo actually played legitimately well in this one. So let's get into the film and kind of talk about what they are doing well. So like, let's start off with something like this. So what's going to happen here is this is going to be basically just your typical Kyle Shanahan play. But what I like about this and what I always find fascinating about Shanahan is because they run the ball so effectively, I'm, I swear, I don't see this of any other team other than Kyle Shanahan teams and it's not just the 49ers this happened with the Falcons it was actually a really big deal with the Texans going back in the day uh where you know teams basically react as though it's play action even when it isn't play action on this play there are two backs in the backfield but it's not going to be a play action it is zone coverage and you're basically going to have the effect of a play action even though it's you know only a three-man rush on top of that it's going to be eight players in coverage and a three-man rush watch the two linebackers over the middle that's the main thing I want you to look at. Look at how they're just a little bit slow in getting back. I mean, again, it's not like a full play action. It's not like they're running all the way in, but they're just a little bit hesitant to drop back into coverage. And that one little split second, it just makes things easier for quarterback. How much easier? You be the judge. But that one little split second, it does make things easier for a quarterback, and it does make the windows bigger and that's what happened there. Also, well ran route by Brandon Ayuk. That also helped. Now, one thing that they've been able to do well is, you know, use Debo Samuel in the running game. I like this stuff. And Samuel is really good. Kind of what he has is I feel like a lot of people take bad routes on Debo Samuel. And to me, what that always tells me is deceptive speed. Guys aren't ready for the speed that Samuel has. And I don't know if it's like actual 40 times speed or if it's just acceleration. My guess is it's just acceleration, but he has that because, you know, I've circled a Cincinnati player. He is the closest unblocked man right here. And watch what's going to happen when Samuel takes the ball and runs to the top of the screen. Look, so Debo Samuel takes the ball. He's going to run up there. And at this point, I've circled two Cincinnati players. It feels like, you know, 24, that's going to be a tough tackle for him to make. Like he took not the best angle to get over there, which again, does sometimes happen. So I get it. But 30, the safety, he absolutely should be able to get there. Although I also should mention 24, it's a corner number, but it is a safety as well. Von Bell, uh, he's 24 on this play. Uh, and then number 30 is Jesse Bates. So those are two guys that Samuel is going to try to beat and he's going to successfully do them. Got to be honest, kind of looked like Jesse Bates pulled off a little bit. Maybe he was just kind of, you know, there was a good tackle by an offensive lineman up in front, but it seemed like maybe he could have made the play. But also an element of it was Samuel just has speed and also the 49ers. Uh, one of the best blocking teams in football. I mean, they're incredible. So all of that stuff factoring in is allowing you to get touchdowns in sometimes relatively creative ways. That's what happened here. It was a pretty creative way here. Now we got to talk about something like this. Uh, George Kittle was really good. And I think that part of why the 49ers looked a little bit underwhelming early on this season was because of the Kittle injury. When George Kittle was out there, he just changed the game because what, what are the 49ers kind of known for? It's, okay, you pound a rock, you run the football well, and then you run, hit them with a play action over the top. Well, what happens when those play actions, you know, aren't available? Or what happens when teams aren't defending the run so much? They're saying, like on this play, it's a third down and long, and they're just playing cover zero. Uh, I've circled George Kittle. He's the guy who you're going to look towards. He is the way you beat this coverage, is you throw the ball up to George Kittle. And also, Garoppolo's numbers are great against the blitz. Part of me wonders how much of that is because if you're blitzing, it means you're leaving George Kittle one-on-one -on -one because you're not going to double a tight end when it's a blitz. And in this case, there's no one getting doubled because it's cover zero. And watch what is going to happen here. As you see, Garoppolo, he's just going to throw it up to Kittle, who's going to be able to make the grab. He gets wide open and picks up the first down right there. I mean, he's just a great asset to have, and he's the way you beat man coverage. You have to find a way to beat everything, right? You have to find a way to beat uh, zone. They have plenty of ways to beat zone. You have to find a way to beat man, and George Kittle is that way to beat man. There's other things you can do, but he's the easy easiest. And quite frankly, when you have a guy who just can win one-on-one -on -one consistently— it's going to put you in a bind for the most part. And, and that's what happened here. And like, I want to show this one because I want to bring up that like, it's not like Cincinnati was playing bad coverage on Kittle. This is going to be Von Bell 
actually doing a pretty good job of hanging with Kittle in man. It's a similar situation. It's going to be a cover one play. Kittle is in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. There's a go route, and watch what happens. So, Garoppolo is going to take the snap, and you see that, uh, you know, at this point, there is a bit of a window, like a perfect throw, and you can make this happen. Perfect throw, perfect catch, but it's going to be good coverage. Watch. Bell does come back nicely. I think if the throw is a little bit higher, it still is a big completion, but, you know, I'm showing that to say, like, listen, there is ways to beat George Kittle. It's just hard to do consistently. You might get one or two here, they, here and there, and I thought Cincinnati did that, and that's how they were able to get some of their stops, but they just could not get it consistently whatsoever. It just, uh, I think it's kind of funny a little bit. George Kittle ended, ended the game with 151 yards with 13 receptions and a touchdown, and I came out of it saying, hey, they handled Kittle pretty well. Like, I legitimately thought that during the game. He just, he's that much of an athlete, that much of a, of an impact player to this team. All right, now something like this, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be a cover three zone. And this is just a, a Kyle Shanahan special. This is just what it is. Kyle Shanahan will scheme guys open. No one does it better than Kyle Shanahan. Not necessarily like more consistently, like there's a lot of good offensive coordinators, but when Kyle Shanahan schemes someone open, he schemes them wide open. This play, it's a cover three zone. You have two players running over the middle, but basically the way I want you to view this is if you're the Cincinnati defenders really think about the corner who's in charge of covering the bottom left hand corner of the screen what are you going to do once you see this you're going to move in to make sure you're covering up uh you know the players over the middle right that's what you're logically going to do but then San Francisco sends another receiver deep and that's that's how this works is you just hope that you can fool them a little watch how right when this play begins look at 22 there look at this just quick step in that one step it's too late. You've lost. You've lost this uh, situation at this point. Now, Garoppolo is going to make this throw, and, you know, maybe he should have thrown it a little bit early. Uh, you know, it, you're able to actually come back. This gets ruled incomplete. I mean, it not it gets ruled incomplete. It was incomplete. Maybe you can still make that play. But I, I still wanted to show that because it kind of goes to show just what Shanahan can still do, even though this one didn't actually work out. So yeah, I mean, listen, another good performance. You could argue, okay, Cincinnati did have some stops in there. It was a very fun game. I mean, uh, really, I mean, Joe Burrow was awesome uh, on the flip side. Probably not as much fun for 49ers fans watching it, but for Bengals fans, he was a, a blast to watch. Uh, really for the, you know, I think that you get Jimmy Garoppolo playing well. I know he's kind of Viewed up, viewed as the guy who he can run an offense, but he's not going to give you too much else. He made some good throws in this one on top of this. I didn't really get too much into it in the film, but he did make some good throws. Uh, and, you know, George Kittle, again, can't, can't understate how important he is because there's a reason why, like, uh, Brandon Ayuk looks better when Kittle is on the field. It just takes some extra attention away. And once you get that guy that's going to take extra attention away, it just makes things so much easier. So, yeah, really good win for the 49ers. Kind of one that they didn't need, but it puts them in a much better position moving forward. So, yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.